Ah, the miracle work. I'm happy to see you here in the miracle work. It's great to continue with the chapters. And uh, there's like a lot to discover always. And uh, today specifically is around the idea of fear and not to examine fear, but just to know a couple of things so that you don't get confused about it. And that will help you to just be yourself, not anything else. And it will help your world dissolve too, at the same time. The world in which you think you might be completely stuck in or something. So uh, yes, that's that's a little bit of the program. It's still chapter two that we're in and um, yeah, healing of now um, fear as lack of love is actually the uh, title of the section that we're looking at. But I did some say prep work and distilled some of the expressions in the in the chapter two for you. Put it on, put it on a sheet and share it. We'll share it with you. All right. So. Since we're warming up again, uh, we did do that with a little bit of dancing or swinging on this incredible music. Um, we also can do this uh, by just going through the first 10 reviews of the first 10 lessons. And I will read them to you. So just as an, oh yeah, wait a minute. This is a course in miracles that we're actually discovering. And so the review is always good to to let go to learn oh yeah wait a minute i don't have to do that oh yes i have to let go i have to let go let go let go let go let go don't try to bring it all together in your thoughts don't try to like yeah glue it all together and making a world out of it that's not necessary no my thoughts do not mean anything For instance, <clears throat> so nothing I see, for instance, means anything. The reason this is so is that I see nothing and nothing has no meaning. It is necessary that I recognize this, that I may learn to see. What I think I see now is taking the place of vision. I must let it go by realizing it has no meaning. I must let it go by realizing it has no meaning so that vision may take its place. And here's lesson two. I have given what I see all the meaning it has for me. I have judged everything I look upon and it is this and only this I see. This is not vision. It's merely an illusion of reality because my judgments have been made quite apart from reality. And I'm willing to recognize the lack of validity in my judgments because I want to see. My judgments have hurt me and I do not want to see according to them. I do not understand anything I see. How could I understand what I see when I have judged it amiss? What I see is the projection of my own errors of thought. I do not understand what I see because it is not understandable. I do not understand what I see because it is not understandable. There's no sense in trying to understand it. But there's every reason to let it go, to let it go, to let it go, and make room for what can be seen and understood and loved. I can exchange what I see now for this merely by being willing to do so. Is this not a better choice than the one I made before? These thoughts do not mean anything. The thoughts of which I am aware do not mean anything because I am trying to think without God. What I call my thoughts are not my real thoughts. My real thoughts are the thoughts I think with God. I am not aware of them because I have made my thoughts to take their place and I am willing to recognize that my thoughts do not mean anything and to let them go and to let them go 
I choose to have them be replaced by what they were intended to replace. My thoughts are meaningless, but all creation lies in the thoughts I think with God. I'm never upset for the reason I think. I'm never upset for the reason I think because I'm constantly trying to justify my thoughts. I'm constantly trying to make them true. I make all things my enemies so that my anger is justified and my attacks are warranted. I have not realized how much I have misused everything I see by assigning this role to it. I've done this to defend the thought system that has hurt me and that I no longer want. I'm willing to let it go. I'm willing to let it go. I am upset because I see what is not there. Reality is never frightening. Reality is never frightening. It is impossible that it could upset me. Reality brings only perfect peace. Reality brings only perfect peace. When I'm upset, it is always because I have replaced reality with illusions I made up. The illusions are upsetting because I have given them reality and thus regard reality as an illusion. Nothing in God's creation is affected in any way by this confusion of mine. I'm always upset by nothing. So lesson seven, I see only the past. As I look about, I condemn the world I look upon and I call this seeing. I hold the past against everyone and everything, making them my enemies. When I forgive myself and remember who I am, I will bless everyone and everything I see. There will be no past and therefore no enemies. And I will look with love on all that I failed to see before. And I will look with love on all that I failed to see before. My mind is preoccupied with past thoughts. I see only my own thoughts and my mind is preoccupied with the past. What then can I see as it is? Let me remember that I look on the past to prevent the present from dawning on my mind. Let me understand that I'm trying to use time against God. Let me learn to give the past away, realizing that in so doing, I'm giving up nothing. I see nothing as it is now. If I see nothing as it is now, it can truly be said that I see nothing. I can see only what is now. The choice is not whether to see the past or the present. The choice is merely to see whether to see or not. What I've chosen to see cost me vision. Now I would choose again that I may see. My thoughts do not mean anything. I have no private thoughts. Yet it is only private thoughts of which I'm aware. What can these thoughts mean? They do not exist. And so they mean nothing. Yet my mind is part of creation and part of its creator. Would I not rather join the thinking of the universe than to obscure all that is really mine with my pitiful and meaningless private thoughts? Okay, so one more. My meaningless thoughts are showing me a meaningless world. Since the thoughts of which I'm aware do not mean anything, the world that pictures them can have no meaning. What is producing this world is insane and so is what it produces. Reality is not insane. Reality is not insane. And I can have real thoughts as well as insane ones. I can therefore see a real world if I look to my real thoughts as my guide for seeing. All right, so <clears throat> this is our little warming up and letting go. It's like, oh, right, yes. 
my thoughts do not mean anything, the thoughts of which I'm aware have nothing to do with reality, that's that part of my mind that is literally generating thoughts but have no meaning whatsoever. You, you can use it to pick it up and project it in onto a world and then you think that what you see is real but you don't need to do that because it causes tremendous fear. You do something that is not your thing to do, so to speak. Well, this is where we enter into chapter two and especially the part that I'm using today to, to express, in fact, uh, what's beneath this fear idea. It's like, what is causing fear and why is it so coming back all the time? Because it seems like that, it seems like always returning. There's a little threat, there's a little concern, there's a little frown, there's a little um, hesitation, there's a, a little doubt. All these are expressions of fear, in fact, or there's a defense. There's a defense, you defend yourself. Well, you don't do that if you don't feel attacked. So there must be something out there attacking you. All this is coming back to you continuously on a daily basis. And um, it's good to recognize how this actually works and where the confusion lies that perpetuates the idea of fear. It's like, where's the confusion that that doesn't seem to rule out fear? Like, why is, <coughs> excuse me, why is it not disappearing? Why is it coming back all the time? And so that's why we look at it today um, and get some beautiful insights about how to deal with it in the sense of uh, discovering the mechanisms that are lying behind it or beneath it. <clears throat> All right, so I'm uh, sharing with you some of the sheets I made. Focus more attention to this. And I made bullet points, I'm sorry for that. It's like, I don't want to make too many of them because this is not a conceptual teaching. This has nothing to do with concepts. It has to do with the undoing of your uh, beliefs, in fact. So there are some questions too. So do you believe fear is involuntary? Like fear does overcome you, like it happens to do. Do you believe that fear is happening to you? Like it comes from somewhere that makes you afraid. Well, that is not true. So you might believe that fear is involuntary, but it's not true. It, it is impossible that fear is involuntary. And we'll see, we will see why. See, here it says only constructive acts should be involuntary, which is like the miracle. It's not on the conscious control. It is not done with a certain motive. No constructive acts as the miracle, as loving your brother as yourself, uh, should be like not uh, under, um, say, conscious control but under Christ control. So here it is. Christ control can take over everything that doesn't matter. That's always at your, yeah, always available for you. Christ control can take over everything that doesn't matter. And what doesn't matter is what is causing fear, in fact. So it's like there are a lot of things happening and some of them are causing fear, but you will have to find out how this works. So we, we come to the point, and we'll see that in a moment. It's like we come to the point, I'll step out of this. We come to this in a moment in which we actually see that um, you cannot ask Jesus to remove your fear, for instance. You cannot ask that. Because the fear is gen say literally generated by you. It is not created, but it's generated by you, by your belief in something. You know, that that makes a lot of difference. So it's 
it's like it is up to you to to recognize it and um, dismiss it in the sense of recognizing that there's no need for it so today uh, to give you a little bit of the let's say the main lines in this is like fear is is has always to do with ideas about yourself that you have about yourself like this is taking place in your own bubble and nobody else has that it is you it's like it's happening in your bubble you see it reflected uh, in the world that you see it has everything to do with your ideas about things and you how you think it works now there there are different ways of uh, coming to this fear. So one of them is um, wanting to perform a certain behavior, wanting to um, adapt yourself to a world, for instance. Um, doing that, you, you all recognize this. Well, like you all had a job and that you thought you had to do, uh, but actually, it was not what you wanted. It was not like your pure inspiration. No, you thought you had to do it. So and that led to an incredible strain. It, uh, it caused tension. And it brought you in all kinds of situations that you had no idea how to deal with it. But for one thing for sure is that they caused a lot of fear in you because you did actually do something that you didn't want that didn't align with your will well this is the crux you could say of of the say the generation of fear in your mind you do something that you actually don't want but you think you have to do it so so this is interesting and um you can of course see and this is then also the healing in all of it when you align your will with the will of God, there would be no conflict, there would be no strain, there would be no tension whatsoever. So this is the only place, in fact, where you can be set free. If you see this in a time uh, configuration, like if you see this on a timeline, the concerns about the past that you think you drag with you, the concerns about the future that you are preparing yourself to, are based on ideas that have nothing to do with your reality. But you sure as hell keep yourself busy with it, preparing yourself for the future, doing it different this time so that you tackle some of the problems that you were perceiving. And all this coping and say strategy to survive so the strategy to survive will cause a lot of fear because in fact you're going against god's will there is nothing to fear like god's will god's will for you is perfect peace like perfect peace no not a little bit no perfect peace so there can be no conflict in that so all your individual personal adaptations to what you think will save you is is what is causing you fear you could also say like whenever you did not make up your mind you have all the reasons to be totally afraid because you don't know anything you did not make up your mind you don't know what you want you're just hovering around in, in endless circles that have nothing to do with anything except with your illusion about yourself, with your deception, with your yeah, frantic looking for something that will take you out of where you find yourself. Well, this is basically the, the main uh, story of today, of the, the main insight that you could get out of this. So it is okay uh, it can be handy to already have heard this what i shared just to to put the sheets that i'm sharing with you the the text that is coming from the chapter two to put this in a context just just another time so here do you believe fear is involuntary well fear doesn't come from god fear does not come from christ 
So where does fear come from? From your own ideas about yourself. So only constructive acts should be involuntary because the constructive acts are not under your responsibility. They are be acted out by you, but not by your will in in sense of not by your control. Christ's control can take over everything that doesn't matter. Christ's guidance can direct everything that does matter, if you will so. So it's like, this is your guidance out of the fear. Christ's guidance can direct you, can direct everything that does matter, if you will so. So that is important to know, and we'll see why. Fear cannot be Christ controlled, but it can be self controlled. And why is that? It can be self controlled because you're literally the one who started it. <coughs> Excuse me. You're the one who started it, starting coming up with ideas that are actually bringing you straight into fear. If I think about tomorrow, that tomorrow is lacking something, I already fear. I already feel the fear. I already feel the goosebumps on my back, like, oh no, what to do? Or starting to get yourself into a cold sweat. Like, oh my God, how am I supposed to do that? Oh my God. It's like, so this is you generating your own fear. And fear is always associated with what does not matter. It, what does not matter. It is not up to you, in other words. It is has nothing to do with what will take place. So it, fear is always to do with something that is actually not really happening whatsoever. It is not your situation. It is literally your wish to be afraid, in fact. So it is associated with what does not matter. It prevents me, Jesus, from controlling it. It cannot be controlled by Jesus. The correction is therefore a matter of your will because it pre its presence shows that you have raised the unimportant to the higher level that it warrants. So what does that mean? So the correction is therefore a matter of your will. You will have to see that what you are thinking, so, I'll, I'll get, so you will you see that you put yourself and your ideas on a higher level, thinking that your existence, that your life is in danger and, and that is causing tremendous stress, you could say. You think that there might be a chance that you will not survive or that you will not know how to deal with the situation or that you, your physicality or whatever is being threatened by something. But this is based then on you placing all these objects, all these to a level, um, say a deep level in which they can threaten you as if as if they have real capacity to do so. See, and, and this is like, this is a confusion. You You place that in a different order where they actually don't belong. And the different orders, what I mean is like, as if it is a creative force against you. And there is no creative force against you. The only creative force that exists is in you. But it can never attack you. So that's why there's the correction that has to take place is then that you realize, oh my God, it's actually starting here and nowhere else. It is it is starting in, in my mind. And I made it, I lifted it up to a level in which I think that my life is at danger. Or my, um, it's like my longevity is being uh, threatened by it in cases of like sickness or that kind of ideas. Like, and that's of course not true because it can never be true because you're not that. So that is the whole confusion and misconception that is, that is generating the fear in you. 
based on ideas that are just not true. So this is really good to realize, otherwise you will never be able to get out of it. And it will come back, you know, it will come back. If you don't know how this mechanism works, it will come back to you. And that's not a threat, but that's just the way it works. You have brought thus, you have thus brought it under your will where it does not belong. See, that this is where the confusion comes in. The correction is a matter of your will. You cannot determine how your future will be and you cannot say guarantee the continuation of you. You cannot continue that because there's no need to do that for one thing but it's also like God's will for you is perfect happiness that is happening right now that is that is your will in the end that is your will anything else is a deviation like is is in sidetrack a detour into fear so you you have brought your ideas and your dangerous situation under your will as if you want it where it does not belong this means you feel responsible for it you also feel responsible for your fears and for the real threat in your ex experience of yourself about what is coming or what is threatening you you feel responsible for it the level confusion here is perfectly obvious. So it's like um, if you can hear this, that that is totally helpful. If you can't hear this, you're in the middle of it. See, what I mean with that is this. It's like if you can hear this, it means, oh my God, I just completely mixed up my will with the will of God. I mixed it up. I really thought that there's a serious threat that anything can attack me or disturb my peace or um, a contagion that can can actually do something to me and make me sick or or all these things it's like that is so amazing so so you think that you need, need to take control over that you, that it's your responsibility while the only thing that would be necessary is to recognize Oh my God, I, I just um, misconceived. That's all. I, I really thought that this was truly happening to me. It dissolves right here. And it is not so. Like the level confusion where we're talking about is then that you think that you are actually the creator of that and that you need to take responsibility for it by correcting it. Well, there you get yourself into a good mess. Look, look at the world. It's like this is being done continuously. And the only thing that happens is an increase of fear. Well, you see that you see this everywhere. Um, amazing, amazing. So coming back then by hearing this, by hearing what's actually being shared, you see that um, there is no threat. My will is one with God's. That is my safety. This is not God's will. My nightmare, my disaster, uh, my apocalyptic thoughts, that's not God's will. No. I, I was confused to think so. I, I just totally missed it. I got myself into a, a detour. I got myself into deeply into fear, really thinking I'm threatened by something. While the only thing that's that's happening here is a confusion of will. So I don't have to. Um, so I don't have to adapt my behavior to make it well. No, I just have to change my mind. I have to make up my mind. What is God's will for me? Would be the only question. Like, God, show me your will for me. And it would be healed. You know, it's like, I don't need any of my ideas and my nightmares. 
I, that was just a sign that I needed to stop for a moment and realize um, under which guidance am I? What is God's will for me again? See, then you see, you see yourself sinking, in fact, down into the level where, where you have to be. So sinking into the level where you have to be is what I mean is like you become then the instrument, the extension of the will of God, instead of thinking that you t have to take charge of all of this and that you're responsible for all of this. And so that's, that's essential in this part of the, what I'm sharing. So I'm pulling up one more of these. Oh yeah, behavior and thought. So you feel responsible for what you do, but do you feel responsible for what you think? And this is uh, a question, not just like that. So this question is, is one that you play a lot with the idea of responsibility because you feel responsible for what you do like you do the right thing in your idea about yourself but you can think about it differently you feel do you feel responsible for what you think do you think it's like the the origin of thoughts is like your thoughts have immediate effects like they create the real or the unreal like they create illusions or or the truth and and this is exactly where also the deviation is with fear or love like do you do you feel responsible for what you think because you will have to say uh, you will have to be aware of what you are thinking you cannot just wander away in your thoughts just like that and thinking that it doesn't have any consequences see and I'm sharing this not as a threat, but just as to reveal the mechanism behind it. Your thinking and your wandering away in your thinking has a lot of impact on how you experience yourself. You cannot separate the truth by giving autonomy to your behavior. You cannot separate the truth by giving autonomy to your behavior thinking that your behavior is something autonomous, thinking that that goes by itself and that that's not related to your thinking. Well, that's not true. Whenever you are afraid, it is a sure sign that you have allowed your mind to miscreate, that is, have not allowed me to guide it. You must change your mind, not your behavior. And this is a matter of will. So it's like it has to do with the thinking. It has does not have to do with the um, behavior. And that's really interesting because you see in a religion, whether that's Christian or Muslim or whatever, that there's a lot of emphasis on uh, behavior, at least in the past, but probably today still like sitting in front of the church um, having your nice clothes on shaking well when it when it should be shaken shaking your head when it should be shaken like uh, confirming everything and in the meantime your thoughts are somewhere else and who knows where and see there's an in incongruency between the thinking and the behavior and the will so so and you see this, for instance, too, in the Muslim um, like uh, religion, where there's a lot of emphasis on form and behavior. I'm not drinking alcohol. I put my uh, scarf around my head. I go to the ch to the to the mosque every couple of hours. I do my prayer in the morning at four o'clock, or who knows what. It's like. All this is based on behavior. Of course, there's an intention to a certain degree, and I'm not judging it in that sense. It is more like 
See, there was a lot of emphasis on behavior instead of what are you actually thinking. Now, when you discover, it comes back to you in your discovery of yourself as being the origin of God, like God is in within me, which is not in the within that you think it is, but coming from within has nothing to do with form, has nothing to do with your ideas about it, but experiencing it as an inspiration. So this this is important. So we um, um, we continue here with this one. You must change your mind, not your behavior. It's like it, it doesn't make any sense to change your behavior if your mind is still uh, walking away in all kinds of directions. Correction of fear is your responsibility. When you ask for release from fear, you are implying that it isn't your responsibility. So that's why you cannot ask for anyone to help you being released from fear because it is your responsibility it has to do with where you put your value with where you uh, see yourself and that needs to be corrected in the mind you need to see what you're doing that it, it is um, say confusion about uh, your will and god's will you should ask instead for help in the conditions which have brought the fear about. This condition always entails a separated mind willingness. At this level you can help it. See, you are much too tolerant of mind wandering, thus passively condoning its miscreation. All right, so this is quite a, some expressions here. You, when you ask for the release from fear, you are implying that it is not your responsibility. And it is. Fear is the correction of fear, is your responsibility. And see, that's something that you have to work out with yourself. Um, what I say with that is this. It's like you, you have to discover that... It, that you are creating that, that you are literally misperceiving it, that you are generating the fear by doing things that you should not do. For instance, projecting into the future or uh, evaluating yourself in how you think you're doing and thinking that it matters or um, being threatened by something out there, not realizing that it all starts right here that there is no nothing outside your consciousness that there's no thing that can uh, threaten you or that there's no matter with any capacity to hurt you so this this is great this is uh, good to hear because it's like we you will have to come to taking responsibility for your thinking instead of anything else like that will do the change that will bring about the change so how are you doing are you afraid are you afraid that something might be happening well see there you go again then you project it already away from yourself so here it is like okay you feel fear so what is going on I'm actually thinking something, I'm willing something, or I'm thinking something that is not up to me, that I don't have to do. So who is guiding me? Who is, what is the will for God for me? These are questions that I have to ask to come to, to the rest. It's like I recognize that I'm the one causing the fear. Nothing else can do that. I can build fences around my house against the wolf out there, but still there will be a threat. So it doesn't take away the threat. Now, if I realize where I truly abide, being at home in heaven, like if I recognize where I truly abide, 
what is there to fear? So this, all these steps are helping us to come deeper into ourselves, into, say, aligning our will with the will of God, doing everything, say, in a Christ-controlled, say, letting your Christ self speak in you, learning to listen to the still small voice, will that will be, say, the bridge to the peace of mind that you're looking for, to the, to the release of fear. Suddenly it's like, oh, yes, I don't have to do all these things. I don't have to um, protect myself. I don't have to figure out how to deal with situations or when to do what and how. Like all that is guided, Christ guided. If I listen, that is guided, it will be given to me how to deal with it. And that will bring me joy and the sense of connectedness that I'm looking for. So that's why we look at this, because it's literally like ecstatically a lot of fun. So the fundamental correction, the fund fundamental correction is always the same. It comes back to before you will to do anything, ask me, ask Jesus, ask the Holy Spirit, if your will is in accord with mine. If you are sure that it is, there will be no fear. And if you are experiencing fear, you sure as hell know that it isn't like that. So you will have to ask again. It's like, ask me if your will is in accord with mine. Show me, <coughs> show me what to do, where to go, what to say and to whom. Like this on a continuing basis. Is this your will? You can ask too. Is this your will? And there will be an answer. So this is the fundamental correction of fear, you could say. It's like this will always be the same. You will end up here, whether you like it or not. It's like you will end up here in asking, show me what to do. Is this your will? Show me your will. I want to do your will. Decide for me. And all these steps that we can take. Fear arises. Okay, so fear is always a sign of strain. I said this in the beginning too. Which arises whenever the will to do conflicts with what to do. You can will to do conflicting things either simultaneously or, or successively. You can behave as you think you should, like sitting in front of the church and with your holy face but with entirely, without entirely willing to do so, actually wanting to do something else, um, who knows what. If you think about this, you will realize that in both cases, the will and the behavior are out of accord, resulting in a situation in which you are doing what you do not will. Remember that whenever there is fear, it is because you have not made up your mind. And made up your mind is bringing everything back into the appropriate places. My will is one with God's. I have not a separate will. So God, show me your will. Higher willing. There is no strain in doing God's will as soon as as it is also your own. The lesson here is quite simple, but particularly apt to be overlooked. I will therefore repeat it, urging you to listen. So listen to this. Only your mind can produce fear. It does so whenever it is conflicted in what it wills, thus producing inevitable strain because willing and doing become discordant. The willing and the doing become two. Like you want something else, then you do. This cannot be corrected by do better doing. 
This cannot be corrected by better doing. It can only be corrected by higher willing, by allowing God's will to come to you, by doing God's will and recognizing that is your will. Because you share a common purpose. You, you agree with me on this. It's like God's will and my will are one. Okay, so my will and God's will are one. That's where my happiness lies. Like I want to be happy. So this is this is where the miracle occurs. Coming back to so my alignment with God's will, I feel the release of all the fear and all the strain and all the have tos and must dos and should dos and who knows what tos. You know, finally I can let go of all these ideas in order to just align with God's will. Show me what to do, where to go. Um, decide for me. Show me. I listen. Servant. Yeah, I, I'm here. Your servant listens. Like God, speak to me. Your servant heareth. Or I'm listening. Like, listen to the still small voice. Listen to it, because it is your way out of fear. So this is, in fact, what what was being shared in this part of the uh, chapter. So it's it's great to read it again or or listen to it. Like we made this audio book also with chapter two, um, and it is just lovely to dive deeply into this to to recognize. Oh yes, this is how that mechanism works. It is it is pretty simple, but it can easily be overlooked because you're so willing to fix your own problem. You're so willing, you're so accustomed to to doing instead of waiting and listening and uh, aligning your will with God's, taking time to let that occur. So you could also say like the the miracle when the miracle happens it is you can experience it you can feel it because it will be a release of fear it's like then suddenly you know again oh yeah wait a minute now everything is aligned again uh, i'm not trying to force or use strain to make something happen no this is all so in fact given to me it is my life by grace it's it's given to me it is um, say guiding me it is helping me in every step that i need to take uh, it is happening on a moment by moment basis so there's no long future planning related to it no it's quiet it's still it's one step at a time what you need to know will give me will be given you in this moment what you need to say will be given to you in the moment that it happens like then you come into the say the flow of life instead of the war of fear you could say the conflict of fear so there will be no conflict in that. So whenever you are conflicted in any way or not knowing how to deal with yourself or where to go with it, you wait. You're not trying harder. No, you wait. You come back and it's like, okay, show me what to do. Um, oh, I mean, actually, I'm feeling that I'm in fear. Wait a minute. So that's a red flag. I have to stop instead of trying to solve it. I'm, I have to stop and realize where do I truly abide? What is God's will for me? Show me that. So and then it becomes really simple. So that's really the great healing power of this, of this chapter, of this part of the chapter. It is so fundamental and so essential like every one of us has to do to deal with it to do to find it uh, your way in it to find your will united with the will of god all right so <clears throat> this afternoon or it's the 7 a.m pacific time uh, we come together again for the meditation and it will be as like an undoing of fear meditation 
So in fact, we do the same thing. And I would love to read it to you right now. So I'm, it is lesson 240. Oh, I can get my big book out too. So my big word text, 240. So here it is. Fear is not justified in any form. Fear is deception. It attests that you have seen yourself as you could never be. And therefore look upon a world which is impossible. Not one thing in this world is true. It does not matter what the form in which it may appear. It witnesses but to your own illusions of yourself. So let us not be deceived today. We are the Son of God. There is no fear in us. For we are each a part of love itself. How foolish are our fears. Would you allow your son to suffer, God? Give us faith today to recognize your son and set him free. Let us forgive him in your name, that we may understand his holiness and feel the love for him that is your own as well. Fear is not justified in any form. So we, we will use this in meditation this afternoon. And, and it's lovely. It's like it's so perfectly fitting with this. So fear is not justified. And this is something that you have to check out for yourself. Like you have to be alert for that. If I feel fear, I got to stop. Like it's not justified in any form. There's never a reason to fear while, while it might happen during your day. So then you stop and recognize that you can ask the question, what is God's will for me? Show me. Or from, I let this go. I let this idea go. Whatever I walk around with in my mind and I allow Christ's guidance to come to me. Show me where to go, what to say, what to do. All right, so thank you so much for your attention. And it was it was a compact class, like full of uh, aspects related to the idea of fear. But in fact, helping you to to bring it back to yourself, your thinking. And um, yeah, let's stay in the miracle work to to let go of our thoughts about things and uh, allowing a mind not to wander anymore. But just staying on uh, this is like, I'm an extension of the love of God. That is my reality. That's where the fun is. That's where the pleasure, like where the true pleasure is. So thank you for that. And uh, I hope to see you soon. Thank you.